Okay, everybody, we're going to work on a center wrap right now, and I apologize, I had to switch to the iPhone, but it's only to get some good close-ups. So this is that main tear at the bottom. I've already folded that flap over. We've got our staple holes. We're looking from the back side, and, you know, the wrap is wet right now. I have just peeled back the uh, Holly Techs. And across the bottom here, I've got a couple of tears that really aren't showing up that you can really see. There's one there and another one right here. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, do a quick repair on this, and then I'll come back to you and we'll show you what the finished project looks like. Okay, so I went ahead and did the uh, tear seal right here. I can get it a little pointed, it's easier. So this has the uh, brown... Japanese paper, and I used methyl cellulose on it. i get this back to where it's focused. Did that, and there's little tear seals down here, which you cannot see, so they're gone now. So other than that, um, I reinforced the staples. You can see there's a little bit of uh, transparency here. That's because I need to uh, repoke the holes, but if you remember, they had horizontal tears across here. This is the back side of the last wrap. So the staples will be folded on the opposite side. I'll show that to you in a second here. But these are all done. They're covered with little teeny patches here. So that will keep it from tearing. But overall, if I back it out, it is barely noticeable that the repairs are there. But like I said, uh, this book is going to have extensive cover repairs. We're not trying to hide the work that we did. Uh, we're just trying to preserve the book. So this is a visible sign that you, or the side that you can see. And I take that back. This is not the middle wrap. This is the uh, first wrap or primary wrap. So this is where we had the big split. I'm sorry, I got a little confused. And we come up here, and then we start getting into the, the staples right at the tip of my finger. And it's probably a little bit easier this way. So that's lower staple hole, upper staple hole. Um, this, these had horizontal tears. And then up here, we reinforce these from the back side. So this will hold the book structurally back together once we get the cover in one piece. Okay, I wanted to give you a close up of what this looks like in the humidity chamber. And as you can see, it's really pulled in all the wrinkles that contracted quite a bit. Looks pretty nasty anyway. So we're going to fix all this. This is that uh, tear repair we did. on. This is the very first wrap, the primary wrap. So you can see the tear repair there. Okay, let's press this flat and smooth and let's take a look at it when it's done. Right, everybody. Here is that same wrap. We took it out of the humidity tank. You can see our repairs right here. Everything looks good. Now, I wanted to show you how smooth this is. Now, this went from the humidity tank straight to the press, and we pressed it uh, between the 11 by 17 sheets. And as you can see, it looks absolutely beautiful smooth. Let me, uh, I'm gonna turn the lights off here, and we're gonna take a look at it under a, uh, somewhat of a raking light. So it's got an LED of my uh, my little work headlight here. Let's see if it picks up the, the texture of the paper. You know, it's not like glass smooth. You don't want a glass smooth because that's not what it is. But you see how close up this is now? It's run right across the top. Yeah, everything here just looks real nice. I'm really happy. I like how we do this in the heat press. So running down through here, here's all the repairs. You can see, you can see the paper right there. That's that's the fibers, that's the reinforcement. Now remember this is the back side of the sheet. So the staple is going to be piercing from this side, so you're really not going to see it. There's more repairs. And then there's the big one right there. Okay, so as you can see, everything works out, you know, really good. And this is how we want all of our, our wraps. So let me turn the light back on here. And there you have it. Now it's out of the press. And you can see this is that area was all wrinkled up. 
is absolutely smooth through here now. Page looks great. We've got the holes right here for the staples. Everything looks fine. So once we reassemble the book with the uh, reconditioned cover where we put the halves back together, call it reconditioned, um, we'll put all everything back together and then we're going to refold it, put a new spine on it and uh, press it and uh, that'll be it. It'll be ready. Okay, the other thing I know a lot of you wanted to know is their shrinkage or expansion. And there's a little bit of expansion. And the reason being is you have a page that, uh, when we measured it originally, if you remember, it was 357 by 260. Now that page has also had 70 years of drying out, so it does contract a little bit. Uh, we've reintroduced moisture into these pages. They're very, very pliable right now. Ooh, look at that. So everything is just wonderful. I like how these things came out. But let's take some measurements because that was a, a, a question that came up. So looking at this, I'm going to go ahead and lay this out. I'm not sure if this is going to come on the camera, so you're going to have to trust me. Oh, yeah, we're measuring in millimeters. Okay, so we were looking for 357 originally. This is now 358. Yep, 358. So it gained a millimeter width-wise, which makes sense because we pressed it smooth. It did have a little fold in it. It was contracted because of age. And height-wise, I don't expect much contraction at all. So with that, I would say, yep, sure enough, there's none. It's 260 exactly. So it spread one millimeter this direction and not, nothing uh, top to bottom, which is perfect. Now, as long as we treat all of the wraps in the same method, they'll all get expanded at the same rate, which is what we did. So now all the wraps are, are uh, cleaned and pressed and they're ready to be set aside for assembly. So the next thing we're going to address is the cover. So let's come back to that. Hey everybody, we're back. Okay, we have got all of the wraps done from Vault of Horror number 30. All the repairs have been done. We have our tear seal down here that's been completed. Uh, the staple holes have been reinforced. So all we'll have to do is you know, pierce a couple new holes. We'll be ready to go there. But everything is, oh boy, it's just it's so pliable. There's moisture back in. The, the, the pages are happy. Let's just call it that way. The pages are very happy. So uh, I'm happy with everything. They've all been pressed flat. So all we're going to need to do is, they're, they're all in order now, is we'll reinsert the staple once we get the cover back together in one piece. So for right now, we can go ahead and set these aside. Let me scoop these up here and get them stacked. But that's not why you're here, is it? What you're here for is actually the cover. So let's take a look at the cover. So I have not put it back together yet. It's still very much in two pieces. So. I'm really happy with the gloss of everything, so I was very careful when we were cleaning it. Let's see if I can tip it. Yeah, you can see this is very, very glossy. It's got some wrinkles in it, but those are all going to press out just the, the same normal method that we've been using. Um, both pages were deacidified, not a strong one, because I still wanted to uh, keep kind of that, that, that creamy color. So I did fold over a lot of these edges that were, were crunched over and there's a couple little pieces that popped out. So we're going to go ahead and work on this book today. Uh, we're going to we're going to reassemble it right now, actually. So um, I'll get everything lined up. And if you don't want to watch the slow speed version, I'm going to walk you through everything step by step that I do. Um, you can go over to my alley -oop video. Uh, where I did alley -oop 15 from the 1940s and there's the same thing through I just run through it a really I got it sped up at like 20 times fast the whole thing lasts about two minutes
<laughs> so anyway, let's get started and we'll get this put back together. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is rehydrate uh, the pages because we're going to be using, today we're going to be using wheat paste. Now on covers, I always like wheat paste when I'm using the Japanese paper because it, it, it's stronger, it's thicker, it provides a, a good strength when we're, we're having an area that's going to be folded. So when I do the wraps, I use uh, methyl cellulose. Now, what we're going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and rehydrate this, uh, let it get wet. We're going to towel dry it, and then we're going to bring it back over to the mat to work on it. So I'm just going to pour. This is just uh, a simple solution of calcium hydroxide again. And now you notice it's soaking into the paper slowly. Um, there might be a little bit of sizing left in the paper. So it will gradually absorb up, but once it gets that all done, we'll go ahead and pour it out and dry it off. So in today's uh, reattachment of the cover, we are going to use, I looked at it earlier, I think for choices, I looked at the, uh, the white versus the brown, and I think in this particular case, a brown uh, Japanese paper is going to be much better to do the, the spine. And what we're doing is creating a new spine. So we're going to make uh, two strips once we get everything lined up the way we like it and perfectly. And then we're going to run two strips, uh, a little bit wider one and then a nice thin narrow one. And we'll uh, feather those into the paper and then we're going to dry it and the, the cover will be one piece again. And uh, that'll be about it, because there's not too many uh, tear seals that need to be done. There's a couple on the edges, which we're going to do everything at the same time. So I'm going to go ahead and get this, make sure this is getting under, under the water and soaking in. It's, it's working, but it's very, very slow right now while we're talking. So, okay, I'm gonna, uh, we'll come back to this when uh, we're ready to work on it. Okay, so we have the uh, the wrap out of the uh, uh, getting it wet. So now we have it between the holly techs, and now it's just a matter of lining up. I try to line it up as best I can. Um, so I'm just going to peel this back, and it's nice and wet still. And we're just going to be very careful how we do things. We want to keep it wet. But as with anything wet, I mean, it's, uh, it tears easy. So what we're going to do is take a look at this up close. I'm going to try and manipulate everything to where it should be. I'm going to get a little bit more moisture. And this is just water that I'm using, folks, because I just want to slide this around. We don't want to tear anything, but we want the pieces to be lined up as best we can get them. In fact, I'm going to have to lift this up a little bit and make it a little bit slick underneath so this thing can slide around. Okay, so now we should be able to slide this a little bit better. Now we got to be careful because uh, and I'm getting this very, very wet. But the alignment of everything has got to be perfect. There we go. Now I can manipulate this. And we can see where a lot of the holes and everything line up just right. Where the old pieces meet. And I just want to get the gap just as tight as we can. There we go. Okay, this all is looking really good. Okay, so now what we want to do is I'm going to roll the holly text back over here a little bit. I'm going to take just a simple paper towel. And I'm going to blot a lot of this moisture up just in the center section where we're going to work because if it's too liquidy, the wheat paste just 
well, it's just not, it's not going to work. So again, I'll peel this back, and now we have our our proper working surface. So I did heat some uh, wheat paste up in the microwave. Um, looks like I'm going to need to heat it again. Give me one more minute. Okay, wheat paste is warmed up. In fact, it's steaming here. Now, one thing about wheat paste, you do have to keep it heated up because once it cools off, it starts solidifying. I had a little bit of moisture in it. There's some downsides to using it. The upsides are it's very, very strong. And it's actually the preferred method for doing our cover wraps. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to paint a basically a tack coat down. I'm going to paint it right onto the Holitex. I'm not worried about that because this is just water and um, wheat starch. Okay, so now we have our little tack coats down. Now, what I've already done is pre-torn some 5 gram uh, Japanese paper. This is very light, it's very feathery uh, to the touch. So, we're going to lay this down very carefully, right down the middle, like this, and we'll just, right where that tear is, just bring it right down over the top. Now, you notice, if, if, you, if you're new to my channel, um, you've seen me do, you haven't seen me do this before. Now we tear the edges of the Japanese paper, Tengujo. I always have problems pronouncing that, and Dr. Paul gives me a hard time. So um, we'll lay down a second layer. And this is the only reason I'm using two layers is be, is just for pure strength, because this is a cover. It's a cover wrap. It's got to be strong. So I'm going to lay this down, and we have the nice feathery edges that we we need. There we go. Now I'm going to take the wheat paste while it's still nice and hot, and we start from the middle, and we brush outward into the paper, and this helps basically like there's like tendrils, fingers, tentacles, whatever you want to call it. Um, grip the cover. It does dry almost invisible, you know, as you've seen some of the wraps. Now the, the cover seems to be a little bit lighter than the wraps. We're not trying to hide this again. This is part of conservation. You know, you want to make it as least visible as possible. We don't want it to be like horrible. We want to blend in. We're not trying to hide it. The, you know, the CGC, if it goes in for a grade, is is going to see it. In fact, when I turn things in like this, I make conservation notes and say, this is what I did to it. Please don't give me a purple label. Look at it through a conservation lens. Sorry, just a little bit of side rant because... Uh, depends on who's doing the grading. You don't know what you're going to get from CGC. But um, so right now we're going to get this all down on the spine. I'm not going to mess with the little um, side splits right now. Our, our chief concern is getting this new spine in here. Okay. Now you'll see. You notice there's little little balls here little beads of paste. You know, I try to, you know, for the most part, pick up the, the bigger bigger ones, but it's not a huge concern because I'm going to show you how we roll them into, you know, the paper themselves. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm looking. I don't see any obvious stuff that needs to be repaired, uh, at least not on this, this side. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this over. Nice and gentle, just lay it down. And let's let it cover up our area where we were working. I'm going to peel this back and, and just double check. Because doing repairs on this, the best time to do it is all at once. 
And I, I thought there was like a slight cover tear, but you know, when they're wet, you just don't see it anymore. So I'm going to go ahead and leave this. I know what we're doing with the spine. So we have it there. So now I'm going to take and squirt this a little bit more with water. And see what I'm doing? I'm all those beads of paste and everything, I'm flattening them out, I'm smashing them into the paper. And you know, I'm not grinding it in, I'm just gently rolling my finger over the wet spine. And this is enough to smooth everything out. You know, if I feel like a little bead or something like that, I just kind of, you know, get it wet, keep rubbing it. And again, the wheat paste, methyl cellulose, um, the, uh, there's, there's a, a couple of other pa uh, paste out there. They don't stick to the Holytex. It's a non-woven fiber, so there's nothing for it to really lock in and bond to. That's why it's perfect for doing this sort of work. Okay, that's it. That's all we're doing. So now I'm going to get paper towels and I'm going to dry this and then we'll take it and we're going to do the pressure dry like you saw in the last video of the cover wrap. And I'll bring it back here and we'll, uh, we'll trim up the pieces. We'll take a look at the cover. Okay, we're back. Well, it's done its tour of duty through the uh, heat press. So in doing so, we've sealed this repair strip so now we're going to separate the holytex from it and as you see me do before I just gently run the spatula in between the holytex and the sheet is kind of a little sawing action through here until we get all the way through it okay so that oh, looks like it's caught a little bit right there. I think we got it all. Let's see. All right. So that one's free. Now we'll go ahead and flip this over. We're going to do the same thing on the other side. So remember what we're doing here is we're we're rebuilding the spine to the uh, to the cover wrap. So we have it here. I'm going to flip it over. This came out really nice. It's nice and smooth. Uh, the color match is, is not too far off. Um, I can look over here. I've got a split here that I missed. It's hard to see these things when the, the wrap is wet, but it's not a big deal. We can uh, fix this after the fact, but the, the main thing we we're after was the spine. So what we need to do is trim that up. And I am looking for my straight edge. Here it is over here. All right. So what we want to do is make sure we get a nice clean cut here. Make sure you can see this on the camera. So I'm going to align the edges up really closely as I can here. We're going to do some internal trimming here because you've got this big round V cut in here. We have missing pieces that you know there's there comes a point where it becomes are you sealing the split tear seal which is really what we want or are you adding paper for fill so in this particular case this little area in here i'm 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 torn i think i'm going to leave it for the time being because technically we are filling in a large area but it's also necessary for the structure of the book, which is really the ultimate thing that we are after. So I'm just going to rotate this whole thing around. It makes it a lot easier for me. Okay, we'll come across here to the top. We'll trim it up. I mean, this, I know this is the, the, the fun part everybody likes to see. You know, once everything is back together. And, and 
I know I do things kind of shockingly fast, but at times it's necessary. Um, I'm one of those people, this, this is just a fun hobby for me. Um, I love doing this work, but it's not my normal day job. My normal day job takes me out of the country most of the month. So when I'm home, this is my, my, my work therapy. All right, so there we have it. We have the cover wrap back together in one piece. You know, we do have our holes through here. That's not something we're trying to hide, but structurally, it's sound. So we've doubled up. We can go ahead and reinsert the staples in the proper positions. It's not going to tear through. This is absolutely smooth on the outside, which is what we want. This is absolutely smooth as well. So now the only thing I'm going to do in addition, and I'll do it off camera because you've seen me do this like a million times before, uh, is, oops, I mean to bump the camera. Um, I'm going to go ahead and fix this tear seal right here. Um, looking around here, that's a big chunk that's just missing. I've got another tear here. We have minor micro tears up here. We don't need to fix those. Those are not integral. They're not going to cause the book to fall apart uh, or tear further. This will. This possibly will. So I think what we'll do is fix both of these. I'll do it off camera and then we'll uh, treat the, uh, the cover again to another heat press. And then we're going to do our final press on it uh, before we do the final assembly wrap so everything is all lined up. Um, before we make all our hole piercings and uh, things like that and reinsert the staples. Um, so anyway, that's it. We'll leave it there. We'll come back in a minute. Okay, everybody, we've reached the point of reassembly and putting the staples back in. Now, everybody has their own method of doing staples. I have mine. You have to find out what works for you. In my case, I work with uh, completely flat uh, wraps, so I have to realign the holes. Now what I have here is just a, a, a foam board, you know, construction board. You see you get that down at uh, Staples. And I'm using map pens. And what I do is I, I've, I've gone ahead and pre-aligned this because it's very time consuming and I didn't want to waste camera time for you. But I, I align everything up, put the staple or put the pins all the way through the book into the board that keeps everything aligned. And once I know that's aligned, and I can bring in my cover. Now the cover, this has been repaired. Now, and you're probably wondering, uh, there's holes here. Yes, I did cut out all the holes as they are would be considered filler at CGC, and we don't want that. We're going for a uh, conserved grade. So yes, I did carve out what is unnecessary. However, down here we do have a section of it that contains the lower staple. And I left a little thin structural strip in there which CGC will allow. However, anything else that's non-structural, really like down here, um, the tear has been sealed. It's not going to tear any further. It's been reinforced, but we don't want to garner that uh, awful purple label. So we still got good gloss in the book. There's a little bit of sizing left in it. Some has come off over time, uh, maybe a little bit of washing, but I am not going to resize this book. Uh, if I resize it, that's a whole nother process. So let's go ahead and start the assembly process. We have our staples over here off to the side of the camera top and bottom, unchanged from when we removed them. So I'm going to go ahead and keep everything nice and firm here. I'll take the pins out. Actually, I'm going to leave the top one in for alignment purposes. And we're going to work with the bottom staple first. And what we're going to do is come in here and I'm going to lay this down on top. Actually, you know what? I'm worried I'm going to tear this, so I'm going to take that top pin out, and I'm just going to be careful. So we'll bring this over. We'll align everything. I already know where the staple holes are. I know you can't see them um, on the camera, so you just have to trust me on this one. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and take this bottom staple. I'm going to align the cover. 
I haven't touched the pages, but I know the hole is right here. I'm going to push this pin through the top cover and then back through all the wraps the way it's supposed to be. So then I'll turn this around so we can work with the top staple. And again, I'm going to align everything using the pin. So take the pin th through the first and everything is unchanged underneath. So now our cover is now fully aligned with the book. So now I'll take our staples and since the bottom one's right here. Now this is where there's a bunch of different ways to do things. Now I'm going to go ahead and since, since our weak area is this rebuild area at the top of the staple, I'm going to save that for last. We'll, we'll insert first from the bottom. I'll go ahead and put the, move this pin to the top hole. And here's our staple, our bottom staple. I've got the correct leg. Now I'll go in. I'm going to go ahead and stick my hand underneath this. And I'm just going to push the bottom leg through all the holes and I've got it at a 90 degree angle here I don't know if you can see it um, I'll hold it up a little bit but I've got it at a 90 degree angle to the book so in doing so that allows me to turn the staple and rotate it basically into the top hole without tearing the paper because this is very delicate uh, this is this is probably the worst part about do, doing, at least for me. Um, you know, some people don't like folding socks. Well, I don't like um, putting staples back in. It's an awful job. And it's so hard to keep everything aligned. With the, and you don't want to tear anything going through. So I just got to wiggle this th around. I'm at probably at a really bad angle here, but I don't want to destroy this top cover because that's that's the optics of the whole thing. So I can feel it now. I can I, there it goes, and now it's all the way around, and I've rotated it on the wrap. So now that one is in. I can leave that. What I can do. So I'm going to take this out, and we're going to go ahead and tighten up this lower staple, not fully, just enough to keep it from coming out. So I'm going to put that in, and we're using our staple tool from Immaculate Comics. And I'm just going to fold over just the edge, just at a about a 45 degree angle here. That's all we really want right now, because we're just trying to keep alignment. So the staple does not come out. Okay. So the staple is not fully folded over. So now we can go ahead and start working on the upper staple. Did I disturb the whole alignment? Let's find out. So what I'm going to do is take my pin. I'm going to go in through the upper hole. I'll check each and every wrap. They don't want to tear anything going through. And so far, everything's looking good. And remember, we reinforced that last wrap, so it's got just a little pinhole in it for the staple. And I'm just carefully looking at everything through the edge. I know you can't see. And there. All right, so there we have it. Bottom staple's in. Top staple is aligned, so now we can move over here, and I am inverted, so I'll go ahead and take this staple, so this is going to be the top, and I'm going to go ahead and pull this pin out, put that back over here. Now I'm going to go ahead again, we're going to work at that 90 degree angle, it goes right in. And I'll swing it around now, and I'll just overarch it into the hole. And I'm supporting it from the back side, of course. 
So there we go. I can feel it. And we don't want to force anything. Just kind of gently wiggle it. There we go. So now the top staple is in place. Okay, we'll take our staple tool one more time. Same deal. I'm going to support it so it's perfectly vertical and start folding it over ever so slightly. Now I want to look and I want to use the same if there's any markings from the previous um, staple. We cleaned them out pretty much. There's very, very little markings. We're still in the same holes. So I think we're just going to go ahead and do the final alignments here. I'm going to support the staple so it's vertical. And now Rick has a great tool. Um, it's a, a basically it's right here. I have it here. This is another great tool. And um, let's see what's it called. I'm sorry, Rick. I don't have it. The flawless staple tool from Immaculate Comics. Now. The coating on this is perfect for doing this. I, I just handy use my spatula for pretty much everything, but we're going to do this because I support Rick. I think he's a great inventor and a true gift to our, our community here. Now, I don't want to mar the staple, so what I'm doing, I know it's hard to see on camera, is just pressing it in to align it with its old mark. Now it was off to the side here and the top staple fold here, I'm going to turn this sideways, I can see its old mark is this one aligns kind of at an angle like this. This one has its old mark over here and so I'm just going to do this manually by hand to get to keep the alignments correct. There we go. That one's there. Now, what I want to do is I want to keep the same folds. Again, like I said, we don't want to mar the staple. And the coating on this tool is perfect for that. All right, top staple is locked in. Now let's take a look at our old markings here. Now this staple was kind of a bent staple. And I tried to keep the bend in it. Uh, I didn't take it out. So that maintains the original shape. And you got to remember these golden age staples, they're not like your, your, your staples of today where they have a, a sharp piercing point on top. These are just more like pieces of wire that get jammed through um, the, uh, the book. So, all right, so there you have it. The staples are now in place cover is now fully attached. We have a book again. So all we have to do is I'm going to humidify this again. We're going to press a new spine. Okay, we are back up at the heat press and the book has been uh, humidified. So we're going to go ahead and I'm going to show you how I put a a, a new spine in. So we're going to take our folds. The reason I put it back in the humidity chamber because we need everything to be nice and pliable. So when we fold everything over and sandwich it, there's no popping of any of the repairs that we did, especially since we have a whole brand new spine. So I'm off camera over here at the humidity chamber and I've got the book here. It's, it's nice and uh, pliable. So the way I do things, and I will take and I will align the edge right here. Now, this book doesn't have a lot of sizing. Um, some of the more modern books, if you're going to be doing this, I'd go ahead and use a, a sheet of uh, silicone release paper, or SRP as we call it. I put one down, one on top, but we don't need that today uh, because, you know, lack of sizing. It's not really going to stick to anything. So I'll align everything on the edges here with my hand, and I keep a, a loop here, uh, and we're just going to lay it down. And I'm going to raise the uh, heat press up here. Okay, so all I'm going to do is align everything here and get it to where I like it in the correct position and hold it. And what I'm doing here is I've got the aluminum plate 
backer board with the smooth side up. And you notice how everything is kind of overhanging the edge. So the reason we do that is we don't want to put the backer board crease right across the middle of the cover, either the back cover or the front cover. Let me turn this back on. We'll get a little bit of the uh, incessant uh, beeping here while it's heating up. And I'll just put another one across the top. And then instead of using another aluminum plate, I just triple up. And I'll put uh, three backer boards. Let me get another one down here. And I'll just put this right on top of everything. And then that, that's all we really need. So again, I'm going to check all my alignments. Um, I still got a little wiggle room in the back here so I can pull and push and adjust corners, things like that. So I think I like where this is at. So now I'm not going to crush this book because there is no backer board in the middle like we normally have for our staples. And I can just hold this and bring this down where I like it. There we go. I'm just going to hold it there for a second. You notice I'm not closing the heat press down at all. So we'll just hold it there for a second. Or 30 seconds in this particular case. And that's enough uh, for it to actually make a spine for the book. And then at that point we're going to lift it back up and then I'm going to set the, the book up for a full normal heat press like what we would normally do here. So I think that's probably long enough. So I'll take this away. We'll take these three backer boards away. And there you have it. We have a new spine. It's nice right on the staples. We got this brand new spine. Everything looks good. The edges look good on both front and back. So I'm happy with this. So now here's how we set up a uh, a proper pressing. You know, we got the, uh, and you see how this came out, the spine went right onto the uh, the staple holes just as it should. So I'm going to go ahead and put a, the fresh backer board in here. And you probably saw me do this in some of the other videos. We just slide it into where it butts up against the staples and that protects them from getting crushed into the book. Now, these older books, especially ones uh, like we just created a spine for, we can't put a lot of pressure on that spine. So I go for a low weight paper. This is just simple uh, 20 pound bond. I keep all sorts of grades here. I keep 24, 28, 110, 65. They're all here. They all have different uh, uses for different weights. So I'm just going to go ahead and put uh, the 20 pound in here and this will this will press the cover smooth and it'll also heat up let me uh, change this by the way to a different setting for 160 degrees at 900 seconds so 15 minutes of press and what I'm going to do here when I do press this book is because the whole book is damp again and we want to get all the interior wrinkles out. This is how we normally would press a book. I'm going to move this backer board in place. Um, in this case, I am going to use uh, SRP. I'll lay this down. And I've taken this sheet of paper, and it's in one of the front cover, one on the back, and I just run it right down to where it stops. And the center backer board Again, that's the one that's butted up against the staples. Okay, and everything looks good. I'm just going to lay it down here on top of the SRP. I'm going to grab another sheet of uh, SRP, and we'll lay that right across the top. And this will ensure nothing sticks, because I'm going to leave this in here for, you know, it's going to be two cycles of 15 minutes, or, you know, so 30 minutes total. And you also want to use a nice fresh backer board. There's no dents or anything in there. So we don't want to dent the cover. And then I'll go ahead and get the other aluminum plate. And we'll put that right on top. And aluminum transfers the heat a lot more ready. You know, I have, these are stainless steel plates. This is what I used to use. I still use them, don't get me wrong. But the aluminum plates are a lot easier to handle and they definitely transmit the heat out. So we're gonna go through and we're gonna set the uh, the heat press to where it should be. Now I just two fingers here and you know, still a little tight. There we go. Cause you don't wanna crush the book. 
uh, we were crushing the wraps, that had a different reason, but we don't want to crush the book, break the spine. So very, very little pressure. The heat is what smooths the book out. And so basically we want it to spread out across the plates just, you know, as evenly as possible. And, you know, one finger, boom, that's it. And we're just going to let this thing run. I'm going to do uh, two cycles of uh, 900 seconds at 160 degrees. And we'll come back, we'll take a look at it. It may need an additional pressing. So uh, it, hopefully it won't, but the more pressings you do, especially with this stuff, you're going to dry it out, make it more brittle. Um, I don't want to do anything with the new spine to destroy it. All right, that's about it. We'll come back and take a look at it a little bit. Okay. Now this has been sitting in the press for a while. Um, I went ahead and shut it off, let it cool down. And we're going to go ahead and check it, and we'll inspect it, see if it needs another uh, pressing. Uh, if it does not, then we're going to go ahead and move it to the cold press. A little bit of a vacuum there because it's flat and smooth. Take away the backer board. Take away our silicone release paper. It always makes an impression here. Um, you can reuse these. I personally don't because you're also going to take the chance of any impression it picks up from a different book may transfer over. Now let's take a look at this. We'll lift this up very carefully. Now the, the edges are curling because it's a little bit warm still, but we're going to move this to the cold press and everything will be perfectly flat. Now I'm looking at the, the gloss on this. Slight loss of gloss. It is smooth. Happy with that. I'm looking at the back side. Everything is smooth. No wrinkly bits. So I'm, uh, I'm happy with this. So we'll go ahead and move this over to the cold press now, and then we'll do a final inspection. Well, here we are, everybody. The book is uh, done. It's back together. It's in one piece. It's flat and smooth. Looks beautiful on the cover. Hold it up and we'll look at it, see a slightly raking light so you can see the cover nice and smooth. Got a little, still got a, retaining a little bit of gloss. And same with the back cover. The spine looks nice. Yeah, you know, it's chewed up, that's the way it was. And you know, we weren't trying to make it look pretty, we're trying to make it the, the, the structural integrity of the book last. We did notch out the sections that were basically filler pieces. We didn't want that. So we carefully open up the cover here to so get an edge. It's nice. It's still got a little bit of tan to it. Same with the uh, the paper. It's got almost that, that, that yellow tint to it. It's very, very tight along the staples. All the wraps have great color still. Very happy with all these. And again, there are the wraps are smooth. You know, that's how the, I, I like using our heat press technique. And, and people are wondering, just in case you are wondering, how long did it take me to do this book? I did this entire cleaning in the course of two working days. Um, and of course, the, my working days on this is based on a matter of hours. So maybe eight hours total work went into this. Um, the thing that took the most time-consuming part was actually the blue light chamber. That whole session, that's two sessions in there, there's nine hours. Um, so that's a lot of extra. But I generally try to crank out a book in a day. Um, sometimes you can't, but this one was a little bit more complicated. As you remember, the, the cover itself was in, uh, in half, so that was, that was a little bit of extra attention. Okay. Now back to the original video where we had our strange uh, spots. So these wraps have been washed, they've been deacidified. So our spot, it's right there. It's still there. It's, I know it's hard for you guys to see at home trying to find an angle or my glance on it. It's not as prominent as it was. But one thing I was looking at is I think it might actually be an ink stain. 
because it actually matches this right here, almost identical. It's, I know you can't see it uh, for certain, but if we turn the lights back on, I was really puzzling over this thing. What was it that it couldn't wash out? And it's all over the page, and I believe it to be printer's ink. Maybe somebody had it on their hands when they made the book. I don't know. But anyway, it's not coming out, and I'm not going to try to get it out. So now we're back to the center wrap. So as you can see, the staples came out very nice, right dead center, right down the fold where we wanted it. Um, everything just looks, looks, I'm really happy with a lot of this. Colors look great again. We didn't remove, we didn't make the pages bone white. Um, we, we never want to do that actually, because in 1950s when these books were printed, they were printed on pulp. Pulp was never bone white. You make it bone white, then it's going to look unnatural, and that's not what we're after. So everything we did to this book, because I have people I ask, um, is this conservation or restoration? Uh, folks, this is conservation. Now, the reason I notched out everything on the cover, all the, 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 the fill holes, things like that, if I had left that, it means I was adding material to the book. Um, in an effort to make it prettier. Um, that would fall into the same grouping as uh, putting color on the cover, which is not something we did. So everything we did with Japanese paper, wheat paste, um, the uh, deacidification, all of it falls under conservation. So now, to put that to the test, yeah, come back here in about, well, yeah, probably about a month. This will go out in the next uh, shipment to CGC. And I fully expect that this will garner uh, a conserved grade. So fingers crossed. Uh, I've, had, I've had a few uh, unpleasant surprises lately. I think it has to do with their their actual grading department. And I don't think there's much consistency there it's when they're trying to determine what's restoration and what is conservation. But that is a rant for another video. Overall, thanks for watching. And if you like everything that you see here at the channel, please like and subscribe. Uh, this really helps me and you know, gives me energy to do these sort of uh, projects for you. Um, I'm not making money off YouTube. I'm not monetized. And I do this because I actually just love these books. I love the fact that um, we're preserving them. Uh, we're making them last another 100 years. Uh, these can be, do we put them in slabs? Yeah, we do. We do put them in slabs. But if you want to break them out of slabs, read them. That's great. Um, addressing a comment somebody made to me in the section uh, about it seems like a lot of work um, to do something that's going to get a purple label. Well, I hope I don't get a purple label. But if I do, I still enjoy what I'm doing. I'm not in it to flip a book and make a ton of money. Um, that's not it at all. I just love comic books. Anyway, thanks for enjoying the video, and we'll see you soon.